I'm Lizzie Harrison for Card Player TV here with Todd Brunson. How's it going, Todd? Pretty good, how are you? Good. So how's the World Series been going for you so far? Uh, I don't know, slower than I like. I've got two caches early and nothing lately, so it's kind of frustrating. All right, well, I brought you here today because I wanted to talk to you about game selection and cash games. So we've got to get out of the tournament mindset okay. into the cash game mindset. We're there. All right. <laughs> so when you walk into a poker room, what factors go into you deciding which game you want to play? Or maybe when you play lower stakes. I know these days you often only play the one game, but maybe flashback a few years. Yeah, well, first of all, you should know, like, who the better <coughs> players are. So you know right away if you walk in and you see, like, six people you know to be good players, it's probably not a good game. Look somewhere else. And then uh, also if you know a lot of good players or a lot of regulars, you can ask them how's the game, and they'll tell you, know, tell you if it's good or not. And besides that, how many chips are on the table, and... Um, you know, look for the, is a lot of big pots or not, and you know, you can usually tell if there's two drunk people in the game, it's probably a good game. So, yeah, you might, if you can put up with them, then you jump in. So, if you're playing in a game which you consider to be a good game, but you're losing, is it a good idea to get up, or should you stay there because you think in the long run you beat it? As long as you're playing well and the game's good, you should stay. Um, you need to be truthful with yourself, make sure you're really playing well and not, you know, maybe you're on tilt and in denial, which is, a lot of people do that, but, no, as long as, I mean, the cards will even out eventually, so. Right. So how do you determine when a good game has gone bad? Like, how do you know if it's you being on tilt or the game shifting? Well, usually you'll see people quitting. Like, right. you'll see the people, you know, people you've identified as fish usually at a certain point get up and leave, and then they might be replaced by fresh players, and then maybe that's a good cue for you to leave, too. Even if you're losing, you should just get up and go. Why do you think so many players have <coughs> such bad game selection? Um... Uh, I'd say some people are lazy and don't care, and then some people sit in a game, like you said, that was good and then turns bad, and now they're stuck and they don't want to quit or they don't want to get up and go maybe to a smaller game that's better and mm -hmm. just get stubborn. How big of a leak is poor game selection? It's everything. If you, it's everything. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing, if you're the ninth best player in the world and you sit down with the um, eight people who are better <laughs> than you, you're going to lose, so it's everything. Well, I know you also play a lot of mixed games. When mm -hmm. you're sitting down at the table with the other players, how do you determine which games will be in the mix, and how do you make sure to get your good games in there? Well, we negotiate when we start the game. So, you, if so it's you, an actual negotiation? You also yeah, sit down? if you're there when they begin, then you get to you know, negotiate. And then if they want you in the game, they might offer to change the game for you, when, you know, add a game or whatever to get you to sit down. But and luckily that doesn't happen for me much. So. And what's the right balance between your good games and your opponent's good games? Like, when should you get, how do the negotiations go? Well, you should just get as many games as, you know. Where you, you think you really have an edge? Right, absolutely. Earlier today, I was talking to Mike Mattiso, and he said a few years ago, you and him were the only people that could get a game started, and since then, he thinks both of your game selection has improved, and he wanted to know what you thought about that. Well, we were the only two that could get a game started? Yeah, he said you and him and Curtis would always be sitting at the table mm -hmm. trying to get games started. And since then, both of your game selection has improved and you no longer do that. And he wanted to know why you think that is. Well, I was sitting at the game because Mike Mattis saw it. <laughs> <laughs> My game selection was still good back then. <laughs> That's great. I cannot wait to tell Mike. I'm just kidding, Mike. <laughs> In the biggest games, the players obviously have the fundamentals down. They have the experience. Mm -hmm. So what determines who comes out as a winner? It's all about discipline, who can take the bad beats and, and keep up with, uh, you know, keep their demeanor and not get frustrated and not go on tilt. That's everything. Once you get, you know, once you hit a, once you pass, like, the middle limits, that's, that's everything. That's what it is. So how do discipline. you avoid going on tilt? Um, I like money, so I don't want to go on tilt and lose it all, so. Well, that makes sense. I heard you recently signed a deal with Hardcore Watches. What's going on with that? Yeah, see, so. So what types of watches do they offer? Uh, different ones, like this one's, it's a joker face with three carats of rubies. Wow, and that's my, really cool. Yeah, my next one's a uh, suicide king, it's got five carats of uh, diamonds around it. So it's, and they do use a lot of black diamonds too. It's really cool, different jewelry, and they're, they're opening a shop here in the Rio. In the Rio? Yeah, it's, when I is think that it, it's like any day now. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Hard, hardcore watches. Well, thanks so much for coming up to talk to me today, Todd. Thanks for having me. Lizzie Harrison with Todd Brunson for Card Player TV.